Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Here we are again for another video in the um, the roster, the beginning roster and skills up tactic help video. Whatever you want to dress it up, it's just a video to help you guys with a race we pick um, on starting rosters and obviously how to skill your players upon why. And um, we're getting through them all now, aren't we? We get in there. Um, I think we've got what, three, four more of these videos to do. Um, we've done all we've done all the Legendary Edition races. We've done Orcs. We've done. Um, I think Wood Elves, Necro, we've done them all. Like I say, subscribe to my channel and uh, it'll always let you know when I've done a new video. And there's also a playlist already there with a lot of other rosters. So today we're doing Chaos Dwarfs. If, it, if Chaos Dwarfs wasn't the, the team you wanted to uh, watch, um, don't worry, there's plenty of other videos on my channel, so go and have a look. But Chaos Dwarfs, regarded as a very powerful, some would say OP race. Um, I'm not exactly um, agree with that. I think they're a very good solid race, but I do think they have a few weaknesses. I mean, for instance, they don't really have a proper ball ca uh, handler, in my opinion. You know, the, the, uh, they're very slow. Very, very slow. And if you don't get the right level ups, you know, they're not as great as people say they are. But we'll see. We'll go through it. And um, you can always let me know in the comment section what you think. Are they overpowered or not? Now, one thing I... Well, the trickiest thing I have with Chaos Dwarfs is what starting roster to go with. Because there's a lot of very good starting rosters. So, um, let's go through them. So, the first one gets you, you two bull centaurs. What's always good. So, you get your two bull centaurs. You've got three rewards. What's always nice. Um, but you only you can only afford five case dwarfs, not six. So that's where that's what you have to sacrifice. And you have four hobgoblins. You have twenty k in the bank, so fifty k, and you can get yourself either a case dwarf uh, blocker to to put you to the the full six, or you can go f with thirty k and get an apothecary and get that much needed apothecary. The, the problem with this build is obviously if you lose or have to retire a, a case dwarf or a bull center, it really just mess with your plans. And that's happened to me before, so that's that's the only concern. But I think you know, with with a lot of teams, you you just got to get through that first game or two with not much damage, and then get your apothecary. But um, I'm an iron user; is good to help. Hobby up, go, up, go, uh, uh, new hobby upgrade is not too much of a problem, to be fair. So that's um, the first one. The second one sees only having one bull centaur. So we sacrifice a bull centaur, but for that, we get ourselves our three rerolls again. But very importantly, we get an apothecary, what's fantastic. And we have six Chaos Dwarf blockers. So you get the full complementary of your Chaos Dwarf blockers nice and daily. And that is then um, rounded up with four Hobgoblins. So, like I said, this is probably better all, all around build. The only nagging thing is, is obviously, oh, that bull centaur, only one bull centaur. What it does do, though, it, it lets you skill up that main ball centre by himself without, you know, trying to split the duties and, and various other stuff. And this is a more reliable build for various reasons, because, one, you've got an extra block piece in there, and obviously you've got the apothecary to save you any terrible injuries, or hope to save you. So, um, you know, this is a really, really nice build, and it is definitely a better all-around safer build, in my opinion. So... The third build is if you want a Minotaur in your team. Again, luckily, we've got the three rerolls. Unfortunately, we've only got one Bull Centaur. That Bull Centaur we got rid of has been replaced by a Minotaur. Now, 150k for a Minotaur. What has to roll double on mutations, to me, is a bit of a rip-off. I've got to say it. It's an absolute rip-off. I suppose giving them normal mutation might be just a bit too OP. Who knows? But, um... That's the main thing what puts me off a minute or. Apart from you've got to move on a 4 plus all the way around. You know, well, I, I never, I'm never a big fan of Wild Animal. Yes, you don't lose your tackle zones and all that, that's great, but uh, I always <laughs> I always feel a bit annoyed trying to just move up. I need to roll a 4 plus just to move a guy. I I just think a minute or really early on oh, makes the team so more un unreliable, I'm afraid. Yes, they do get the strength of power, but don't forget he's only armor 8. 
the other bad thing as well is you only have five blockers because you couldn't afford the six blockers. So that is another reason why I don't like this build. So you've lost the bull centaur, you've lost the case dwarf blocker, and replaced it with a minotaur. What can yes can cause carnage. Yes, it gives you um, a piece with mighty blow, but it also is the most. You know, it's going to be how can I put it? A very unstable piece. What could yeah win your games, but more likely than not lose your games. And again, you've got your four hobgoblins. <clears throat> this is a very high risk reward uh, thing. This is this is someone who isn't bothered about winning early and wants to develop a minotaur early doors. So later on, it becomes nasty and is a powerhouse. But don't forget the chances are with the money having armor eight, he could possibly uh, die quickly as well. It's not a build I would go with anyway. And and the final build is if, for instance, look at them lovely pink <laughs> chaos dwarfs. This, this build is if you want a bench. If you definitely want a bench and, and one of your main tactics is fouling, then this is this is, this is is the build for you. Again, you've only got the one ball center, what's, you know, bad times. You do get the three rerolls, but crucially, you do still have your six case dwarf blockers. Then you have six hobgoblins. So that gives you 13 people or pieces. So that gives you a two-man bench. So you can sustain injuries without being shorthanded to the next drive and it gives you a free license to foul with your cheap 40k hobgoblins so that is really tempting the only negative with this build is obviously you want an apothecary that's 50k and you want to buy yourself a bull center that's 130k so you know you, you, you're gonna you're gonna be without probably the bull center for three four games and the problem is is if you start losing these hobgoblins to injuries as you can do with them being on the armor seven you know miss next games or minus one armor and stuff like that then it can sort of start to look a bit you know busted and it, then you're wishing for your next bull center the other option as well is having more hobgoblin hob well, hobgoblins is there's a bit there's more chances the mvp going to hobgoblin what you don't really want you want that mvp going to your bull centaurs or, or your case dwarfs that so that's another thing to uh you know think about when you go for this build right if i'm going in the official sign cup on the pc the xbox one or the ps4 which build would i take and the problem is this is probably one of the only rosters i really struggle to give a definite answer if you want to foul a lot, just the build we've just seen, go with that. If you want to develop a Minotaur, well, yeah, then go with that build. Although I, I personally wouldn't. It's it, it's really hard. I usually take the first choice or the second choice, and they're both really hard choices. I just tried on on the PS4 with a build with two bull centaurs, you know, and five dwarfs. The problem was one dwarf ended up missing the next game. One had minus armor, and already I was down. Luckily, I'd rolled high enough for cash, so I bought a case dwarf back. But again, I'm behind the eight ball. Whereas if I'd have gone with um, this build, yeah, I've only had the one ball center, but there's a good chance I could have saved one of those two case dwarfs for the next game. And then with the extra cash I had, even if I'd have lost one of them two pieces, I could have got myself a sixth um, case dwarf blocker. So if you if you had to pin me down to a one roster. If you want the safe, reliable roster, then this is it. Definitely the best all-round roster. You've got your three re-rolls, you've got your apothecary, you've got your six, your full amount of case dwarfs already there, and you've got bull centaur. So I think this just shades it. So and and crucially as well, you've got thirty k in the bank, so you're hundred k away from a bull centaur. So you've got your team. Now, how would you skill them up? And this is what we're going to go and have a look at now. One of, the, one, of the, one of the biggest debates regarding Chaos Dwarfs is the Bull Centaurs. What role do you give them? Should they be, um, should they be ball carriers? That is one of the biggest ones. It's very divided. Some say yes, some say no. Uh, and, and, and there's benefits for both. So what I'm going to basically do is show you this, this, this um, setup. Now, if you, could, if you could stop and get agility on this guy... Fantastic. I mean, let's have a look at this guy now. That's how he is now. Let's just say you rolled agility. Boom. Get him in there. All of a sudden, he looks a lot better as a ball carrier. So, 
Um, you get really, you get some really good starting skills with this guy. You get sprint, short feet, thick skull. So basically, potential movement now with built-in reroll. Fantastic. Yes, every so often you're going to fail one, but more likely than not, you'll be okay. Best thing to do with these sort of guys is just do one GFR square each time instead of all three at the once. So then if he does use his short feet early doors, then you can make a, a decision whether it's worth going for it again or not. Then, then, then we come to our fair skill. What's the fair skill we go for? If he's going to be ball hand led, do we go with block so he can still be good on defense and he can hit people? Do we go for break tackle because obviously if someone ties him up, he can try and dodge you in a two plus for you know out of a tackle zone. Do we go short hand so I'm not wasting these these re rolls trying to pick the ball up every turn? And and the question is, it's totally up to you which one you want to go for. And that's basically it. Usually with my bull centers, I usually try and go break tackle first because I don't want them I don't want them tied up. If I only had the one ball center, then uh, maybe short hands. It, it, it's it's one of them two skills if, if you're going to be a ball carrier because break tackle means you, there's a very good chance you don't get tied down and short hands will save you the countless re-rolls because you say it's a 50-50 if you catch it or not. If you've got the short hands, it gives you a much better reliable chance and if anyone's crazy enough to come in there and try and strip ball you, obviously short hands works. So that's what I would do. I'd go short hands or break tackle. And then block. If at any stage of the level ups you roll a double, then dodge is definitely the thing to go for. Dodge is fantastic. Dodge and break tackle work superb together. Bludge, strength four pieces are always great. So uh, even if it's fair skill, I'd take dodge. Because I just think it's just such a good skill to have. And really, really makes um, bull centers really, really good. But there you go. That's the sort of build... You want, and I think the reason why people go with the ball centre as a ball carry is because hobgoblins are really average. They don't get access to agility unless it's a double. So the sprint and uh, short feet, things what are crucial or really do help ball carriers, they're not really going to get unless they get really lucky with rolling doubles. So this is the reason why people go with a ball centre like this. I'm not totally against it, and I'm not totally for it. I am totally on the fence with this. And I think it's basically how I get my first couple of rolls with ball sent to see how we go. And I think that's probably why I roll, where I usually I go break tackle first. Because every every path is open with break tackle first. I can go ball carrier, I can go blitzer, I can go uh, any, any way possible if I go break tackle first. So obviously that is a good thing. Uh, another build that what I'm not going to show you because um, today is obviously you, you can make these into killers, mighty blow, piling on, and all that sort of stuff. Tackle, I think that's I think a lot of people have seen that sort of build. So I'm going to show you a different build, one what is a really good defensive build, but not many people use it because many people don't like wrestle on the bull centers. This guy basically is beyond that. A defensive line of, of um, case dwarfs. This obviously, as well, funnily enough, this really complements having a Minotaur as well, because if your Minotaur's up there already, he's got the strength, fab, uh, beefy power there to help your six case dwarfs. So you got so that would strengthen that line. So if I was to take a Minotaur, I would probably build both my guys like this. These sit out of the back and they, they, they're waiting, they're ready to hunt anything what tries to get through. So wrestle is wrestle, tackle, and strip ball are all normal skills. Even break tackle is a normal skill. So you don't even need doubles. So you're not relying on a double to to get this build. That's what's so great about it. If you did get a double, like I've said on the other one, dodge is fantastic. Break tackle, strength for dodge piece, fantastic, brilliant. Having two of these guys in the backfield will be a pain in the backside for your opponent. Because not only are they dealing with the, the power uh, of the guard and the mighty blow and hopefully some claw there in your case dwarfs. And then if you've got a minotaur as well, he's using his frenzy, he's using his strength five. He may have claw, he may have tentacles, he, he could be doing his, his stuff. To get through all them and then the fouling hobgoblins and then get through all that and then to be faced with two of these guys. Ouch. Doesn't matter if you have blodge. 
because these guys can strip ball you, they can tackle you, and they can wrestle you. So, you know, this is a really good build. Really good build. Yes, it means that they're more defensive. Yes, they're not going to get as many injuries. But the thing is, guys, that's what your case dwarfs are there for. They're your enforcers. That's what your minotaurs there for. The, the, they're the guys who should be doing the damage. These two bull centers are at the back saying, you get past them, you've got to deal with us. And having break tackle means it's harder for them to, to, to lock them up. And if you've got two of them, they have to worry about two of the pieces. You can have these two pieces even in the middle of, of the pitch. And they can both go out of the way because of, obviously because of the sprint and the show for you. So, you know, out of most of the builds you're going to see today, this is one of the best builds you can get. And trust me, if you've got builds like this, yes, you know, if you've got builds anywhere close to this, you, you, you'll be very happy because they are nice. Right, so there's our bull centaurs. Now, let's, let's have a look at the dream Chaos Dwarf Blocker. This is the dream. If you can get six guys like this, you are in heaven. Guard is always, 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 did I say always? Needed on dwarf, case dwarfs. They've only turned three. As much as great they are with the block, the tackle, the thick skull, the armor nan, they're still only strength three. So against the likes of Saurus, Black Oaks, the big guards, they need guard to help offset that strength weakness. So always take guard first. The only time you don't take guard first is if you roll a double. If you roll a double, you get straight down there and get that claw. Because claw on... You get you get case to open claw. Oh my god. It is a game breaker. You start having chaffs minting through armor nan on a regular basis. And, and don't forget, you know, a lot of these armor nan pieces are the, the big big black orcs, the big saurus, and you start dropping them and taking them off the pitch, then it is, it's, it's, it's massive. It's absolutely massive. So always, in my opinion, if I roll a double, I'm taking claw every day of the week. I don't care where I get it. Fair skill, any, anywhere, I'm getting it. So claw and doubles, obvious. Guard, stand firm, mighty blow otherwise. So if you don't roll a double, guard, stand firm. Sorry, I'd probably go guard, mighty blow, stand firm. So you've got your guard to help with assist. Your mighty blow helps taking players off the pitch. And stand firm keeps him in position to um, offer assist to his colleagues. And obviously, if they don't knock you down, then you're going to get a free hit back at them next turn. So it's telling them, you know what? You want to hit me? Go ahead, hit me. But I tell you what, if you don't get me down, you're going down. I'm going to hit you and hit you hard back. And if you've got claw, people will be worried to take you on. We claw and stand firm. It's a very scary, yeah combination after this as we'll see later on and um, we'll, we'll show you other ones um just going back i always forget this just going back to um the bull centaurs for, for um characteristics strength take it every day of the week agility can't hurt especially if he's going to be a ball carrier movement can't hurt armor would be the only one i wouldn't take Right, back to back to the case dwarfs. So for case dwarfs, movement I won't bother with. Uh, at the end of the day, they're there to basically grind down the middle and, and slow cages. Having one at movement five isn't going to be much of a big deal. Armor, again, your armor nan. You can't start worrying about armor ten. You do take armor. It's stopping you from getting the better skills like guard, stand firm, mighty blow on a double claw. So I wouldn't take armor. Agility, I wouldn't take agility either because they're not there to they're not there to ball handle. It's just complete waste. So the only really uh, the double you want is is strength on a case dwarf. You get a strength four case dwarf. It is beautiful, especially if he's got guard around him. But yeah, this this is my favorite build. Definitely my favorite build. I do this all the time. Then I'd branch off with various other things depending on what role. But um, yeah, fantastic. You get six of them, you'll oh you're in heaven. Even if you get three or four like that. This is a this is a build where unfortunately sadly haven't rolled a double. So again, start with guard, then get mighty blow. The difference with this build is you can have one or two of these just with dauntless. 
because obviously you're going to go against a lot of strength four pieces. So having a couple of dauntless pieces in there really gives you synergy and makes it effective to your team because you know you are going to get against these black hawks. And maybe it's you and one of your case dwarfs. Even if he's got guard, it's only one dice. So on a two plus, that one dice comes into a two dice. More effective, knocking him down more, more chances of knocking him down. So that's why you know later on one or two. I mean. You know, you could go stand. You could go guard, might blow stand them, then dauntless. I I just try and squeeze in one dauntless somewhere early doors out the six, just to give give me you just that little more um, big hitting ability. So this 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 is another just another slight build. The problem with case dwarfs is you you're trying to build most of them exactly the same way because you, like on the the build I just showed you, that's the best way to build them. Now, if you want to kill a build, this is the way you go about it. So you've rolled, you've got core first up. Fantastic. That's just awesome. Follow that up with Mighty Blow and then piling on. The only issue with piling on is obviously you're trying to keep your case dwarfs prone. You know, you want them stood up, giving that assist to the colleagues and stuff like that. If you've obviously got guard. This one, though, I mean, Pace myself, I may have one with piling on. I don't know if I'd go crazy, but... um. Now I've said that, I'll probably go with loads and pile on. But um, I, I, th I think they're just as deadly with Claw and Mighty Blow. Pile on can work, but it doesn't always work. And if it doesn't, you're on the floor. Although you're Armin Arn, you could get gang fouled. You're not helping out um, on assists. And don't forget, because they're slow, all, all they're doing is getting up. So basically, pile on takes them out for that turn, the rest of that turn, and the following turn, really. So, you know, they're not very quick in case dwarfs. So pile on to me. Although it looks good, and yes, you, you, you know, you break the armor, and sometimes you're going to pile on, and you're going to get a better result, and you think it's well worth it, and sometimes it is. You've just got to remember, for that piling on, what basically is an injury reroll or an armor break reroll, it's going to keep him on the floor, and it's probably going to keep him out of doing much in the following, following uh, turn. I would rather go claw, mighty blow, guard, because guard is more important than piling on, in my opinion. Piling on, I'd get a lot later on, but... This is the build, if you're saying, Bernie, I just want to go kill, kill, kill. This is what you'd go. Other other skills you can go with as well is Frenzy. Um, Pro is a good one to go for. If you if you want to go something completely different to the rest of your guys. But again, Stamp Firm's good as well because if he hits you and doesn't get you down, then you're going to get a free shot next turn. Now then. This to me is another... This is like what a legendary... Um, case dwarf blocker looks like. I just thought, sure. You, you've got you, this guy. Is, is one of those guys where you roll fantastic. You've rolled a strength increase. Fantastic, his strength four. You've rolled a double, so he's got claw, and then he's got some nice normal rolls. Look at that, strength four, mighty blow, piling on claw, guard, stand firm. He, he's perfect, perfect player. So you, this is what you're hoping to have it like, and this is what the this is when people say, oh, they get, can get so overpowered because they can look like this. This is a deadly piece. And bearing in mind, he could have guard either side of him because he could potentially be a strength six. So, you know, you can see with the right skills between them working together what combination you can get. Right, so you roll doubles and you're like, Bernie, I don't want claw. Come on, I want something different. Give me something different. Okay, let's go somewhere different. You roll a double. Don't want claw. There's a couple of things you can go for. You can go for horns, plus one strength on, on when you're blitzing. This would be crucial if you have a minotaur. If you've got a minotaur, then you're more likely to be blitzing with that guy. So, I, how about prehensive tail? Minus one from someone to dodge away from you. Bearing in mind, you already have tackles. So if they're blodgers, they've already lost a tackle skill free reroll already. So, even, even an elf is dodging on a three plus. A normal agility three piece is dodging on a four plus. It's a 50 50. A few of these pieces are annoying as hell. The problem is obviously is you are forsaking claw for it. So it makes you less punchier, but it makes them a lot harder to dodge past or disengage from you. If you rolled a second double, then to me, diving tackle is a really good skill. People laugh about diving tackle on dwarfs, but it is really good. And if you've already got prehensive tail, they stack. So that is a minus three to someone 
dodging away from you. So even a much vaunted wood elf, what's dodging away on a 2 plus, will now be dodging away on a 5 plus, and they will not get the built in um, dodge free roll because your tackle negates it. So 5 plus. And if it's an agility 3 piece, well, it's a 6 plus. So basically, they're probably going to get locked down, and the only reason they're going to dodge away from you is if they're in, if they're, they have no other option and they need to move that player. You sort of get this guy locked on the ball carrying it's almost game over. So, like I said, it's not a build I would use that much, but I'm trying to show you other ways of using mutation access, and this would be quite successful. Yes, he doesn't... I mean, he's still got Mighty Blow in there somewhere, so he's still going to be punching. And like I said, Claw is only good on things that are better than Armor 7. So against Wood Elves and all that sort of stuff, Claw's useless, where this would scare Wood Elves, um, even Amazon, definitely Amazon, crikey. Amazon trying to get away from Preemptive Tail alone would be terrible. Sling diving tackle in there, they might as well just give in. So like I said, it depends who you're playing against. If you're playing against a lot of... Um, low armored things in your private leagues, then this is probably would be a better better fit than the claw pieces because obviously claw is going to be wasted. But um, yeah, th this this is a nice little build, but you'll see a lot of people won't use it because they want the claw. <clears throat> I mean, what you could do if you got claw first and you roll the double again, then there's nothing stopping you from getting preemptive tail after that because. It's, it could work. It's a really nice combination. Because if you think of it, Claw, especially if it's like high armor value target, you know, like um, AB9, AB8, and they want to get away from you, it's going to be a lot harder with Preemptive Tail. And if they stick stick next to you, you're going to get a Claw shot of them, especially if you've got Mighty Blow. So, you know, on two doubles, I could see Preemptive Tail and Claw being good together. This one is, again... Just something else. What I, if if I couldn't take claw? What else would I take? Um, disturbing presence is just a, a little interesting way of going. What it basically does, it gives you um. Well, I'll, I'll read it. Any player must subtract a one from the d6 when they pass, intercept, or catch for each opposing player with disturbing presence uh, within three squares of them. So let's say you got three or four of these bad boys with disturbing presence then basically you, you, you almost make it into a no-fly zone. What well, sounds great. The problem is, is with obviously Nergal out, people, especially the fast teams, are starting to r realize how to get around this. True, every so often people forget about it <laughs> and, and, and it'll cost them a turnover or something. But, um, you know, it's probably not, again, this is probably the least build I would go with. But again, I'm just offering you a different mutation option. Again, because they're usually going to be used in the middle, then, you know, Descent Presence isn't going to be great. If you can funnel the opposition down a flank, then Descent Presence becomes fantastic because then all of a sudden they're going to have to run through you um, instead of passing. But again, you know, and guard, I, I, put, I, I put, sorry, guard, sorry, I put grab there just to keep them, if you hit them and you can manipulate them to make sure that that opponent keeps in the Descent Presence. Like I say, it's a build I wouldn't use, but if you wanted some theme or you wanted to say, you know what, I'm going to try my very best to stop you from throwing the ball, you're going to have to run through me, then that would that would be fantastic. So, so, th so like I said, there's your case, Rolf. Like I said, oh, the, only, the only characteristic I'd take is strength. I'd ignore the other three. Now, the Minotaur. Oh, love-hate relationship with these guys. I try not to take them these days, but... The more I look on a, a, a case dwarf team, the more I'm thinking, oh, I, you know what? I wouldn't mind a mano because I want my I, I want the bull centaurs being them wrestle blitzing pieces in defense. So my six case dwarfs might need some beef to help them out. And the only option you've got is this guy. The thing what I don't like about this guy is mutations on a double. That is, I hate that. I really, really hate that. And that, out of everything, even more than Wild Animal, puts me off it. Really does. Because the thing is, if I roll a double first up, what do I actually take? Because there's block. Now, I, you obviously try and take block all the time. But then there's claw, what make him into a really reckless killer. But at the same time, he's still unreliable. And then you've got tentacles, what 
is really good because you can keep pieces in place. So, you know, it's it's so many, oh, what do you take first? And that's if you're looking to roll a double. Again, people say, well, close great, and it is scary, and it will help in the in the beefing up stakes of taking out high priority targets. The problem is, though, there's a lot of low armor targets what it's going to be wasted on. Block is obviously the safest option because it helps you on defense, and it also helps you when you're blocking. Tentacles is great because you can shut down the especially strength two skinks or, or or strength two gut runners uh, or even keep strength three strength three pieces in place. And the good thing is if they try and get away from your tentacles and they can't, then you're going to get a free hit on a two plus. Yay! So it is awkward. It really, really is awkward if you roll a double. Well, if you don't roll a double, it's quite to me. It's quite straightforward which two skills you pick first. I would pick guard and uh, stand firm. Guard because obviously your team wants guard or uh, anywhere they can possibly get it, and stand firm basically he stays in place. And again, if he's if he if he's next to a guy or he knocks a guy down, you know, and they try and push him away, they can't because he's got stand firm. So then you'll get a free hit on a two plus. So you know that they're the two skills I'd go with. Juggernaut basically makes him a lot more safer when he blitzes. If he hasn't got blocks, obviously um, both downs turn into a push, and also it helps with surfing players on the side. So if you can funnel your opposition down the flank, then that becomes more. He can becomes extremely a lot more dangerous with Juggernaut. And remember, he's already got frenzy built in as, as a freebie already, hasn't he? So uh, fantastic. Horns obviously plus one strength makes him strength six when blitzing. If he gets a guard assist or any sort of assist, it's three dice. So you can see the potential of these guys, but I just think for 150 grand, 150k, 150 TV, how you want to, how you want to say it, is a lot of cash. This guy's obviously legend, and he's 300 TV, but he's bloody fantastic. So this, this uh, minotaurs to me are a lot more needed if you go down my build of the wrestle strip ball um, ball centaurs. I think this guy comes more more important the only negative is he will whoop your tv value up and there's going to be times where he'll just mess up or you just will not move so pro is another skill to look for as well um out out the three out the three if i rolled a, a double first up out the three skills i just don't know I, 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 more times than not i probably would take block because i think it's a better roll round um and then than the other two so i'd probably go block just and then if I rolled another double, then it's totally up to you. You've got Pro, what makes him be a lot more reliable moving. And obviously if you get pushes, you can try and get a free reroll. That would be useful. Tentacles is great for just locking down a piece, especially strength two piece, and staying it there and keep repeatedly hitting it. And Claw obviously would strike fear into your opponent and gives you a strength five frenzied mighty blow claw piece. And if you've already got block, this guy can churn it out. So, like I say, the good, I just don't like the price on them, and I don't like mutations to be on double. It's probably like that because of, I mean, they say it's because of Slave Minotaur, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not really being opulated with Chaos. And my opinion is, well, why are the Chaos Dwarfs? But anyway, you sort of want this in your team, <laughs> but... Uh, my TV would go so high. I've I've seen I've seen teams who have fantastic minotaurs and they've just done, they've done brilliant. And but I've seen other te teams where they've tried to blitz every turn and they keep rolling ones, and that's your blitzicon. So um, there you go. I I can't really say anything else about. I'm again like a lot of the case twelve things. I am sat on the fence with this guy. There is potential with them, but there is also a negative. Finally, we look at the good old little hobgoblins and um, you will need as you get your bench because these, these are only 40k yes movement 6 not shabby strength 3 is not shabby agility 3 for 40k plays not shabby unfortunately though they're only armor 7 they had to have something bad about them but because only 40k one skill up dead player 60k dead player fantastic I'll have one or two of these guys preferably one for each half and I'll be going around stamping on the best pieces if I can and um, you know, and also with the money I'm on seven, you'll probably keep them alive a lot longer as well to do their job. So um, I think you'll see with most case dwarf teams they have at least one of these these guys because they're cheap, 
and uh, you really should be getting these guys. Any way to get the numbers down on the opposition is a bonus. And um, you know what? You, you're going to lose hobgoblins during the di during the game. So hey, why not lose one by taking out a, a, a better a better value piece? And the, the thing is as well is you might take the best value piece out and he might still be on the pitch. So I'd get at least one of these dead players. If you roll a double on, on one of these guards, then in my humble opinion, it's got to be guard again. I know I keep going about guard, but with bash teams, grinding teams, guard is so important. You can't go wrong with guard. And obviously, you know, he can just hide behind the dwarfs, and then when his need is going to throw in an assist with his guard, he can do. And um, these are real nice, cheap pieces. Nancy TV for a, a block guarded hobgoblin is fantastic. And this is just a build where it's on normal rolls where, yes, you can make a strip ball in Hobgoblin if you wish. Wrestle Tackle is fantastic by itself, but obviously you've got the option of strip ball. Really good. Um, if you roll a double with this build, I'd more likely go with Dodge because then it obviously makes, me, it makes him a lot more easy to get where he needs to. It's the only time I wouldn't take guard on a double with, with, with a guy built this way or as a ball carrier. So... Um, Again, I would probably build my ball centers, but you know, they, this is um, another option if you wanted to use your ball center for something else. You can have one of these, one or two of these little hobgoblins at the back doing that. The problem is, you'll find a lot of hobgoblins don't survive to three level ups, and most of the uh, most of the uh, the the, the their, uh, XP that we're getting is from MVPs. Um, now, if you want a ball carrier, this is the way you do it. They're not great. They aren't great at all, but hey, this is just the way it is. So block, show hands, they should be first two skills. If you roll double, then go dodge instead of guard, because obviously you want to bludge your ball carry is fantastic, and kick off return is fantastic with slow moving uh, pieces like this. Because obviously move, moving three squares could actually get you under the ball, so it gives you a free shot of catching the ball, and if you fail to catch it, you're only one square away from picking the ball with show hands. So this is really, really good combination. These these skills together are fantastic. Regarding hobgoblins on on characteristics, movement yes for this for this piece definitely. Movement seven is a lot obviously a lot better. And um, strength takes strength every day of the week on any piece, apart from it, apart from probably dead player unless I suppose you could move him into a make him into a strength or block her dead player piece, but. God, you wouldn't be happy with that, would you? But yeah, strength every day of the week. Agility, absolutely. Especially a ball carrier. A ball carrier with agility 4 is amazing. Um, armor. <sighs> Ooh, you see, the thing is, your ball, my, my philosophy is with throwers and ball carriers is you're supposed to protect them from getting hit. I'd only take armor on this piece if I've got if I've got this build. If I, if I rolled armor now and I had them four skills, oh, I don't know, because I'd want movement as well. I'd, I probably wouldn't take armor until later on because, I'd, I'd, to be honest, I'd probably take movement over the armor on this piece. Um, I'd take armor on, like, line of scrimmage hobgoblins if you're not putting your dwarfs on there. That would be another option, but, you know, that's how I'd do them. You've got the option of kick. Um, I don't think... Ugh, kick's always nice. I don't think kick's as much important on dwarfs because they are slow, and um, I don't really like sending my ball centers into the enemy's... Um, half when there's like 11 of them and only two of us so um i'm always a bit wary of that but if but the good thing about kick is if you have kick there's a good chance you, well you can make sure you don't kick out on the full what's always nice and uh, the other thing what i haven't shown you here is um if you want if you want line of scrimmage um hobgoblins instead of dwarfs then i'd go wrestle and fend um more time than not though you're better off probably putting three K dwarfs on there just because they're armor value nine and they've got block and everything the only time i'd really throw hobgoblins up up front is if the other guys had claw mighty blow and all that sh shebang then then i then i definitely would put my case dwarfs on the front line but um sometimes you've just got to trust in that armor nine to uh to hold out because the chance that if you put three hobgoblins on the front line and they all get powered down the chance that one of them is probably going to go off the pitch and already down on numbers so there you go. That basically is my um, take on Case Dwarfs. Really nice team. The are they O powered? Uh, OP. 
They can be, like any team. You you roll the right dice for any team, for majority of teams, they're going to be nasty. And they're no different. The key for, for this team, really, is the the potential of taking claw on your six dwarf blockers. That is huge. You, you get three or four pieces with claw in this team as they're building up. They're going to start churning out or churning through your opposition. Especially if you've got guide and they're, they're built right. But what you got to remember as well is that's not going to help them against things like Wood Elves or Elves Union. And teams like that can always have a lot better chance to pull Chorfs apart, you know, with the speed. And that's why, like in Blood Bowl, teams are suited better against other teams. You know? that that That's always been the case. Chase Dwarfs, they want to place maybe some like Dwarfs. Yeah, especially with a lot of Claw. Game down to Claw, you know, Alma 7, fantastic. But uh, yeah, they, they are a nice thingy. Uh, I am going to I have decided I'm going to give um, um, Chase Dwarfs a go in, in one of the uh, cups. I'm definitely going to try it on the Xbox One. I'm going to go Chaos Dwarfs. And I might have a little dabble with them early doors on the PS4 as well and see how they go. Because this is a team I haven't used for a long time. And um, I'm going to see how good I can do with them. So that's me done. Thanks for listening and, and, and watching as always. Please subscribe because if you subscribe, you're going to get, obviously, notifications to all the videos. We've still got about three, four um, rosters to do. Off the top of my head, I know we've got Chaos and we've got Nagel to do. I know we've definitely got them two to do. And... Um, like I say, we're going to be starting the, the weekly shows of the Cyanide Cup on the PS4 and the Xbox, where we talk about basically the the week what's gone by in the in the sea ladder, the the official Cyanide Cup competition, and then now I'll I'll be having coaches on with me as well. We'll have a few laughs and giggles and quizzes and 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 talking about teams and uh, and who and thing and um, what Teddy Tom said. We're going to have a poll position where we'll have a look at the top team and. Uh, dissect why they're doing so well so uh, there's plenty of stuff to go and also the blood and tears private league on the ps4 as well will be going through that i'm already streaming all the games for that as well on, on, on my own personal team coach of destruction so um there's plenty to go about anyway i've rambled on long enough <laughs> like i said please give us a like subscribe any anything you want to ask me put it in the comments and i'll get back to you as quick as i can thanks again take care and i'll see you in the next video Never be myself Take me right